we are inside Soundstage 50. This is a very special effects soundstage. Just yeah. look like the mean streets of Tokyo, more specifically a chop shop. And the director is a buddy of mine. So, uh, hey Jim, you want to clear the set and give the show? Clear on the set. Thanks, boss. Let's see the bullet hits. And go. Smoke. Go. Fire. Go. Okay, we're clear for a full run through. All systems check. This one's for real, guys, so watch out. And action! Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Carnage and Karma. Boys, take a bow. See y'all get any other movies you want to show us? are witnessing a new reality show that's going to be debuting this summer on NBC. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time anywhere, it's your exclusive look at Dancing with the Cars. My name is SpongeBob. I'm stacking Krabby Patties. I'm going to work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Carnage and Karma. Two examples of our motion control effects, they can take incredibly precise direction and never question their motivation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take the main streets of Tokyo to the little island on the coast of Costa Rica. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Now folks, the picture cars and the set pieces you all want to see were used by Ninjin, the Jurassic Park film franchise. On your left hand side, you're going to see the mobile command unit that was part of the Lions Bond and Julian Ward in the movie Jurassic Park The Lost World. Now in the movie, a dangle precariously over a cliff. But in reality, a dangle precariously over... Oh no! Oh no! It's the whole plot of the movie, right? Now, weather plays a really important part in the movie. Here in Southern California, we have the same old boring sunshine day in and day out. But you know what? Instead of me telling you about the weather, how about we talk to America's favorite weatherman? You know him, you love him. It's the Today Show's Al Roker. Hi, everybody. Here's today's forecast for the Universal Backlot. It's going to be sunny and dry in Six Points, Texas. Cool and cloudy in Little Europe. Expect snow and sleet on New York Street. And we've got a high chance of fog and precipitation for Skull Island, Amity Island, and Isla de Blois. That's your forecast for today. Now here's a look at what's going on. Why, Bob? Newsflash, I was just in. Last time I checked, we need clouds to make rain. And frankly, I don't see a cloud in the... It is raining. Well, this is how we create rain in the movies. We pipe the water straight up into the air and let it fall down naturally. It's kind of hard for the camera to see the water, so we add milk to the mixture. See, you might say that Gene Kelly was singing in the milk. Okay, uh, Stu's our water guy here. Uh, Stu, cut the water, bro. They get the idea. Uh, hello. Okay, I'm going to get the emergency out. Hey, give us a the wrong button. It's a flash of And ladies and gentlemen, this effect is created by dumping thousands and thousands of gallons of water into the tower, you know? And then I get rushed towards the statue. But folks, I don't want anyone to worry because all the water that you see here is all going to be recycled into the park's drinking fountains. Yeah, I'm making it. All right, folks, go ahead. Sit down as you make our way to the next part of our old Mexico set yeah, that you might recognize. Yeah. In TV shows like yeah, Trinity, like as well as House, we've also seen it. In the movie Trump starring Russell Brand, Chelsea Handler, and Hugh Laurie.
All right, down Furnace Street, really good folks, you know, down to one of the oldest streets here on the back lot. Welcome to Six Points, Texas. Naughty Murphy, Peter Gibson, Jimmy Stewart, and the Duke himself, John Wayne, all moseyed up and down these mean streets and stuff there, Dwayne. In the western movie history. Yeehaw. A lot of people don't know that John Wayne's real name wasn't actually John. It was Mary and Michael Morrison. So here tell us a little bit more about the origins of Six Points, Texas' name. This will be Goldberg. She filmed her first movie here, The Color Purple. Whoopi? Did you know that more movies have been shot on these streets than any other spot in the world? Now during the silent film era, they could shoot up to six movies at the same time. One on each one of these six streets. That's why it's called Six Points. Because each street had its own bank, its own sheriff's office, its own saloon, and its own hotel. Now, turn up this town ain't big enough for both of us. So get on back onto your tram stagecoach thing and get the heck out of here. Go on. Go on. All right, we're getting, we're getting. Now, you might notice some of the doorways here are a little bit bigger than normal, and some doorways are a bit smaller than normal. That's for a very specific reason. A lot of our cowboys barely broke 5'9". If you wanted to make them look a little bit bigger, we put them in front of the small doors. Now, folks, anyone in the first car here from out of town? You know, where are you guys from? Welcome, Rochester, New York. Have you guys been to the Pacific Ocean since you've been here? No, do you guys want to go? There it is. The entire Pacific Ocean as seen in McHale's Navy. Now we use very small models, otherwise known as miniatures, to make the area look a lot bigger than it actually was. But before we talk too much more about that, here's some more about cowboys in action. You're just going to stir things up here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you guys to remain seated throughout the tour, keeping your hands and feet inside the vehicle. Also, if you have anything on the ground, you might want to pick it up because, uh, we're about to go below sea level. Don't well, say I didn't warn you. It was all built to scale. We added some ring, some very tight, low sweeping camera angles, some fog, and wave effects, and there you have it. It looks breathtaking on film. Unless, of course, a duck floats by. Kind of ruins the illusion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you take a look over to your left-hand side of the tram, you're going to see our prop graveyard as well as our Edith Head prop department. Now, prop is anything held or touched by an actor. It can be as big as a grand piano or as small as a paper clip. Now, folks, remember how I said the world was literally just around the corner? That's the corner. We're going into Little Europe. You guys have Parlez vous français? Uh, Sprechen de Deutsch? Habla espanol? We're going to need all those languages here because we can make this area any city, any country we desire, all by changing the languages on the signs. It was seen as Kanye Kamari in India and Heroes. It was also seen in all three of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Curse of the Black Pearl, Dead Man's Chest, and At World's End. You might also recognize it in TV shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, as well as this alleyway coming up on our right-hand side of the tramp. You'll recognize it being featured in True Blood, starring Anna Paquin and Stephen Moyer. Now, folks, speaking of true blood, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, that's three, three movie monsters. Ha, ha, ha. They all got their start over to our right in the Court of Miracles. Take a look at your monitors. You can see some more of the terrifying creatures that have got their start right here in Universal Studios. These are the most gruesome beasts ever created. Just as a 
Liberty right on the balcony. You see him? Right by the window. It's the Invisible Man. Uh, you saw right through that joke, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. On a more serious note, folks, did you guys know the Invisible Man and his girlfriend just broke up? She said she couldn't see him anymore. <laughs> Okay, don't turn into an angry mob on me just because I told a couple of bad jokes. Who is it now? The monster. He's in the woods. Get out the bloody house. Raise all the men you can, lock the women indoors, and wait for me. I'm ready! Let your torches and go! Opa, I've been to Mr. Senator. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we just got clearance to go inside Soundstage 50. Now, this is a very special soundstage for a number of reasons. The first reason being, this is the only two-level soundstage on our lot. The top level is dressed to look like a San Francisco street, and the bottom level is dressed to look like a San Francisco subway station. Now, the other reason why it's a very special part of our lot is because they're actively filming here today. They're just on a late lunch break, so they're allowing us to come inside take a look at the sets. All right, folks, now take a look over to your left. You can see we have everything that we need to make a movie. We got the lights, we got the cameras. Uh-oh. Small for my record. All right, folks, a little earthquake. You can be afraid of this for me. Calm, stay in your seat. Oh, no. Officer George in the water, making one final switch. Uh, George, there's another shark in the water. Get out of the water, George. There's another shark. You're four feet from the boat. Dude, swim to the boat. Oh, no. Folks, George had a lot of guts being out there. And there they are. Gross. But don't worry, we're going to stay nice and safe by pulling up behind these highly flammable gas tanks. What's the worst that can happen? He took the dock. We're going to need a bigger tram. You 
Cause I'm burning up, burning up for you, baby. Now I know what you guys are saying. You all are probably looking at me going, whatever, Joe, that shark looked totally fake. Why were you guys all screaming? All right, go ahead and grab your seats, folks. Now, if you look behind us, see the only shark in existence able to do the backstroke. And that's something you don't see every day. Unless you're me. Now, the nickname the shark Bruce after Steven Spielberg is attorney. And the nickname the production flaws because the shark never really worked according to plan. In fact, the very first time they put him in the water, it sank to the very bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So here's your advice right for Steven Spielberg and Roy Scheider to tell us a little bit more about how that shark never works. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio noise. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark had worked well enough for a while there and the biggest of all time. So I really owe the shark a lot. And ladies and gentlemen, as we make our way up the hill, take a look over to your right hand side of the tram and you're going to see our chicken range. That was recently featured in CSI, Crime Scene Investigation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take you to an area that has the highest property value in all of Hollywood. It's Wisteria Lane, and it's home to some very desperate housewives. Now, I'm going to point out all the houses on the left-hand side of the tram first, because that's where all the ladies live. On the left-hand side of the tram, you're going to see a yellow house. That is Gabrielle's house. Gabrielle is played by Eva Longoria. She lives right next door to the Monsters of 1313 Mockingbird Lane. They did a little bit of redecoration before it was featured on Desperate Housewives. Also to our left hand side of the tram, you're going to see another yellow house. That is Susan's house. Susan is played by Terry Hatcher. She lives right next door to her very good friend, Lynette, in the greenhouse. Over to our left hand side of the tram, Lynette is played by Melissa Neal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you see this area with your own two eyes. Go ahead and take a look at it in your monitors. You can see it. ABC the number one rated comedy. Desperate House Next morning, Edie Britt decided to announce her return to Wisteria Lane. Okay, you're not going to believe this, but she's back. Edie, is that really you? You know someone else my age with a body like this? What happened to your tenant? Yeah. Came into some money and decided to move. We thought, what the heck? Let's go back. We? Oh, you don't know. I have a husband now. Really? Who's? Now, ladies and gentlemen, all the houses on Wisteria Lane are dressed to look like the normal, typical, everyday suburban home. But sometimes, the script calls for something a little bit more basic fantasy. And that's exactly what we needed in Ron Howard's version of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Mr. Grinch, every day. You're as cuddly as a cactus, and as charming as a deer, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad They'd be living right next door to a psycho. Oh, yeah. That's right, they replaced yeah, yeah, Norman yeah. Bates and Mother into the most famous out. films that's still standing in Hollywood, the Bates Motel, and if you look up the psycho path, you'll see the psycho house. 
Now we actually don't allow anyone on these buildings premises because this is a historical landmark, so aside from a couple of maintenance people, this area stays abandoned throughout the year. And ladies and gentlemen, just when you thought it couldn't get any creepier. they can film inside as well as out, and it was seen in Mark Wahlberg's shooter and Denzel Washington's Deja Vu. Deja Vu. Then if you look right behind the log cabin, you're going to see a big blue wall. That's the largest freestanding backdrop in all of Hollywood, and it helped us to produce really big budget finale sequences in movies like Inception, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, as well as the upcoming Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, starring Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz. Now folks, for this next part of the tour, we're not going to go inside these sets because they're cursed and haunted. They cover the lights, they cover 
the trail, they're all over the oh, 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 oh.